Hello there. Well, here's a video for what to do when you start feeling overwhelmed. But first of all, everybody feels overwhelmed at some time. It's completely normal. I mean, when you start a PhD or when you start a new postdoc assignment or when you are beginning as an, an, your own investigator or starting a professorship, there's at every one of these points, there is so many new things coming your way that I think it's completely normal that you feel overwhelmed. So you shouldn't worry about that. But what you should keep in mind is how you productively deal with that feeling or how you move on. And so really everybody is different. And these are some things here that worked for me. And trust me, I <laughs> felt overwhelmed repeatedly. For example, when I started a new lab in 1999 and again here in Berlin in 2007, and I still feel overwhelmed uh, fairly regularly at, at some point um, in, my, in my work now. So these things work for me and you may have different approaches and if you do and you find them useful and you want to share them with others, feel free to leave them in the comment section. So anyway, here are some tips. First of all, it's super important that you finish some things up. You know, you feel overwhelmed because there is just so many things on your list. And anyway, if, if I am like most people, I think it's... There are some things you just don't like to do. For me, it's like dealing with budgets or complicated grant application bureaucracy. And it takes me a lot to get started even with it. But once you get started, sometimes you're surprised actually how fast it can actually be dealt with and that it wasn't maybe as big a deal as you thought it was, but it was just important to get started. And just as important as getting started is to just finish things up. But how do you finish things up? Well, you need to set yourself realistic goals that you can actually achieve. So don't say, oh my God, I have to write this review paper by the end of the month. Say, I have to finish a first draft of the introduction, let's say. So set yourself realistic goals so you can actually meet them and so you can cross these things off your list. Because crossing things off that list, it will make you feel better. Another important point is perfectionism. I mean, perfectionism is generally regarded as something positive in a scientist, I would guess, because its attention to detail is caring about the various little things, making sure everything is as best as you can get it. However, perfectionism, by its very nature, it can also become your worst enemy just because things turn out to be endless and you have so many things to worry about at any moment in time, it can actually be the thing that in the end harms you and contributes a lot to you feeling overwhelmed. So one of the skills is to find out and get a sense and learn when it's good enough. You know, even when you set up experiments, there is, they're never gonna be perfect. There's always some things that don't quite work out right and rather than having all of these things worry you or to worry about them from the very beginning, I think it, it's a special skill to figure out when it's just good enough. Keep in mind, it's just impossible to, to get um, something done really perfectly and you can't do things perfectly all the time. Another thing that really helps me is when you've, well, once you've crossed something off your list, once you have reached one of these achievements, then it's important to reward you. <laughs> so uh, then I reward myself by doing something in science or at work that I actually enjoy, like thinking about new ideas, thinking about concepts, uh, uh, starting a draft of a manuscript or something exciting. And I even do that when there are other deadlines pending because, you know, to help with it, I have achieved something. I have made myself do something that I don't really enjoy quite as much. And now it's time to reward myself. And I think then it also adds to your well-being. But of course, also take breaks. Everybody's different. Some people enjoy their four to six weeks off or whatever. I don't. What I do is I take like individual afternoons off or days off or you know, just hours that I basically don't deal actively with, um, with work. Even when I'm at work, I just take a walk or whatever. So everybody has a different way of dealing with it, but it's just important to take the breaks that you think you need or that you know you need. Another point, learn how and when to say no. 
So this is also typical when you are getting into a new situation, you're starting a PhD, you're starting a postdoc, starting as a new PI. Especially when you're a new PI, there's going to be all these things that come your way, committee assignments or are you going to be a member of this council or this committee? Are you going to take on this additional responsibility? And so the list becomes rather long. And so therefore, it's important to, to know and to understand when you can actually say no. Now, you can't say no, no to everything because you also want to be, be a good colleague and a, a valued member of your department, of your research group or whatever. So it's, it's impossible to say no to everything. But what is important to understand is when you can say no. Like you need to understand maybe that part be, being part of this committee is just going to be an endless amount of work and it's going to completely contribute to your sense of feeling overwhelmed. And so then you need, um, you know, some input from somebody who knows, um, no, don't do this committee. Uh, do this other committee, which is going to be a relatively smaller time commitment. You can still do it, and um, it won't increase to your work. It won't increase your workload quite as much. And for that other committee, that's just too much work. Say, oh, this is really interesting, and I recognize this committee is important, but right now I need to focus on getting my lab started or to get myself established. And then, you know, please call on me again because I'd be excited to be part of this committee. This is tricky. Admittedly, you know, I mean, uh, you need you want to also not close yourself up uh, off to opportunity. So it's important to to say yes to things when they come your way. But you got to be very careful about it because otherwise you got just too many too many things to worry about. And what I just said goes hand in hand with the next point: find yourself a mentor. You know, if you're a new PI, find yourself um, a senior P, um, PI or a professor at that institution who who knows their way. And he or she can then advise you also on like which committees would be really good for you to be on because you will get to um, know your colleagues and the workload is still acceptable. Uh, so it's very important also when you're new in a lab as a PhD student or as a, as a new postdoc, find yourself some, some buddy basically that you, uh, that you trust and that will help you navigate all the new responsibilities and help you guide which ones would be good ones to take on and which ones to better avoid. Yeah, I think those are some good points um, to take into consideration. As I said, if you have others, please leave them in the comments. And also, I should add that if this feeling of being overwhelmed, which everybody has um, at certain periods of time, doesn't go away or gets more severe, you need to seek professional help. Don't take it lightly. Don't risk a burnout or um, a downward spiral of your mental health. So it's important to take it seriously. And I hope these tips will help you.